I'm Lynette Meining from Family Ties, Pies and More, and you're watching Meet the Farmer TV. Next on Meet the Farmer TV, connecting the local food dots. Meet the Farmer TV is made possible by Planet Earth Diversified, Melly Productions, and Leslie P. Jenkins Photography and Graphic Design. Culpepper's Channel 21, helping to preserve the agricultural history of Virginia, and In the Kitchen Magazine, serving the community and everyone who loves good food. Next on Meet the Farmer TV, we find out how local people are connecting the local food dots and a survey about local food from Market Central. We're connecting the dots for local food systems. Building a network consisting of uh, dozens of local farms. Keep the community close, keep the family close, and connect the dots. Catalyzing positive change by growing high quality, ecologically grown vegetables. To raise animals, not only as humanely as possible, but to have gratitude uh, for the animals' lives for uh, feeding us. So many of our consumers uh, are very concerned about not only what they're eating, but also the footprint that they're leaving on the environment. I like to help people understand where their food comes from, and I also like to help producers figure out who is eating their food and um, how they can more easily reach their markets. And we're trying to help that local food shed be truly local and sustainable. And you're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. Meet, Meet the, the Farmer, Farmer TV. It isn't always easy to figure out how to connect the dots on local food systems. So here to explain it to us is Kathy Kilday of Market Central. The theme today is to bring together a lot of organizations in the community that have an interest in local foods and expose them to the market community so that they could know what's going on outside of market vending that uh, affects and impacts local food systems. Well, throughout the morning, we've been conducting a dot survey of market shoppers. And the dot survey is an assessment tool that's used in farmers markets across the country for um, to kind of take a pulse of the market and what the shoppers are thinking and feeling about. And it's a very painless way for them to express their opinions. So throughout the market we've had little easel boards set up. As they come into the market we've been giving them a little strip of colored dots and as they go through the market and venture through they can go and put the dot on the answer that makes the most sense for them. And this one is really interesting to me because I saw it early this morning and this is about whether or not they plan to do any additional shopping or other activities uh, downtown. And early this morning the bottom line here, no, I'm just here for the market, was just about full. And as you can see now, it's really evenly distributed. So we've had people uh, doing other things, shopping and eating downtown and doing other things throughout the morning. So this question says, do you plan to do any additional shopping, eating, errands, or other activities downtown today? And the options are, yes, I have other things to do downtown today, or not today, but I frequently combine downtown activities or errands with the market, or no, I'm just here for the market. We will be posting the results on our website. It's marketcentralonline.org. Uh, we also will be posting it in our newsletter that will come out next, uh, next week. Well, let's go see how some of the other exhibitors and vendors are connecting the dots in local foods today. My name is Lisa Reeder, and my business name is A Local Notion. Um, and I am an educator and an advocate on local foods issues. So I've done a wide variety of work in this food system over the past five years. Uh, I've done a lot of educational classes uh, through UVA and also through private groups. I like to do for small groups uh, something that I call cooking and eating classes, which tends to be a little bit of cooking but also harvesting, tasting, smelling, and talking about food and then sharing it among the group. Uh, I like to be the person that sort of connects the producers with the consumers and demystifies that connection a little bit, explaining to people where their food comes from. And I also like to help producers figure out who is eating their food and um, how they can more easily reach their markets. Um, I do have a website which is alocalnotion.net and um, one surprise to me is that I've been blogging for about three years now about adventures in local food and drink and I'm surprised at the range of people that um, check out that blog and that send me comments about it. Um, I like to share the adventures that I'm able to have because I feel very fortunate to have access 
to the food and the people that are all around this Charlottesville area. For people that are interested in becoming more involved in local food, I would say in this area, um, the place to start is City Market, um, getting to know producers and vendors. And I would also say that it's summertime now as people go ahead on their travels and vacations. Food is produced everywhere. Anywhere you go has some sort of local product and local cuisine. So I encourage people to experience the world through food and through markets. And that can happen here, but can certainly happen anywhere else in the world as well. There's a great website, which I refer a lot of people to, which is um, localharvest.org. And you can search that website for producers, farmers markets, retailers, caterers, and that's a nationwide website. So when you start thinking about locally produced food and your travels or your loved ones in other areas of the country, that's an incredible resource to check before you go. So I'm participating in the Connecting the Dots Day here at City Market. Um, because what I find that I do a lot in my work is I give people references to other groups and organizations, websites, I send a lot of email, I try to connect people and over the past few years my job has gotten easier because there are more resources and there are more uh, central repositories for all of this information that consumers need about local food. So I'm here to sort of continue capitalizing on that and to make sure that I'm staying abreast of current events, projects that I may have been aware of in the past that have since turned into something bigger and better. So I'm here as much for my own education as I am to reach out to other people and let them know that I am here and that I like to work as an advocate for local food. One of the local dots is how to get your local food. Let's talk to Zach of Retail Relay, now called Just Relay, how they do the shopping for you and bring local food right to a pickup near you. We're trying to change the way people shop and, and, and build a different food system, one that's more reliant on food sources that are, that are in your city or, or outside your city. Uh, and, and build a network where small farms can compete alongside big stores like Whole Foods, one of our most recent vendors. Uh, so if things continue to go as they are now, uh, this will redefine the way we get food. Relay is trying to provide what we call the sweet spot, which is a network that connects you to all this local farm, uh, local farmer market uh, sort of product, but bringing it into your, your home instead of making it a, just a Saturday event. Uh, building a network consisting of uh, dozens of local farms alongside big grocers that can provide staples that you're going to need as well. Uh, so uh, we, we try to connect the dots in the sense that we're, we're building this bridge between traditional grocers that can provide the staples for your recipes and the local foods that, that we all want. The core business name is still Retail, retail Relay, but um, uh, we're moving towards just Relay or Relay Foods. We've got uh, some new trucks, a uh, new website, a new brand. Uh, we're, we're trying to focus in on foods instead of being everything to everybody. We're uh, opening in Richmond, hopefully at the end of June, beginning of July, uh, so that we can do what we've been doing in Charlottesville and, and uh, offer the same sorts of foods and the same sort of service there as we're doing here in Charlottesville. Our customers shop on average from six different stores per order. So instead of driving around to, to hit these various stores, uh, you go to one spot and the relay system is designed so that that spot is in your neighborhood or it's uh, near your workplace. So there's really no additional work. We every morning just do uh, one ring around Charlottesville to collect everything and then make it available in your neighborhood. Uh, so from a, a mile standpoint, we're, we're uh, cutting down driving significantly. Local is a, a phenomenon and we see things like this happening elsewhere. Uh, Relay is growing at a rate where we hope we're going to be national, so uh, uh, we hope that you see us soon in your neighborhood if you're not in Charlottesville. If you're in Virginia or in Northern Virginia, we're, we're headed that way. Uh, and if you're a, a, a customer, of course, you'll be able to go online and order. Uh, if you're a farm or a food producer, uh, there are ways to get started right now with uh, talking to us and, and beginning the partnership. So, I mean, we're always interested in talking to food producers, whether it's uh, uh, a bakery or, or someone producing uh, local eggs, there's a place for you on Relay. Uh, so uh, you, to get started, you just uh, send us an email and uh, 
We'll put your product online and figure out how to plug you into the network. So we have with us Dave Winder from Whole Foods uh, in Charlottesville, uh, a rep example of one of our larger vendors on Relay. So we just started the relationship, but I feel like it's working very well. Uh, we've got about 800 products and growing online. Uh, and uh, in many ways, they're, they're just like any other vendor, only a lot bigger uh, and, and with products that are really impossible to find elsewhere. Well, I think one of the things is it allows access to uh, lots of other people, too, because we, they offer, we t retail really offers the delivery service, which we have not offered in the past. Uh, so, uh, you know, from a grocery store standpoint, we're able to actually now compete with other stores that do this, where, and we haven't offered that in the past. So it expands the ability for uh, people to, uh, you know, people who are handicapped, for example, can't get out there, they're able to order that and get it, and get it home delivered. And then people who live a little bit farther out and don't make the trip as often can come to a one-stop shop and, uh, and have everything taken care of for them. So this is a great example of a larger uh, food vendor really taking part in the, the local environmental focus movement. It's, it's fantastic. Longest time we, we felt like it'd be tough to get uh, somebody as well known as Whole Foods in, as involved in this. Uh, but their reaction has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, for us, it's a way to deliver products that we know our customers want, that are, uh, that are tough to get any other way. Uh, for Whole Foods, it's a way for them to branch out and be all over Charlottesville uh, and all over the surrounding area without buying a new store. Uh, and like I said, uh, you know, for our customers, uh, they're, they're getting the products that, that they want right alongside the local offering uh, that, of course, we're all trying to support. Well, it's, I think we are looking down the road at doing possibly some joint marketing. So once again, it will expand the knowledge of uh, people about Retail Relay, since it is a fairly new company and it's new to Whole Foods. Uh, and then it also will expand people, you know, once again, learning that they can actually get Whole Food products. And I think the buying power of Whole Foods helps as well, because like you said, there's a number of things that uh, other vendors may not be able to get that we can get, whether it be special orders, uh, you know, or, or hard to find things. We're, we have the buying power to do that. And then w once again, you also have you know, 36 Whole Foods in this region. So as retail really expands, uh, like they're expanding to Richmond right now, uh, then you can actually incorporate Whole Foods in that as well. So it, it, you know, that it's kind of a, it was a good test phase right now to see how it goes, and, uh, and, and, and we're hoping for the best. But so far, it's working well. Now let's hear from some of the other local farmers of their innovative ways of connecting the local food dots at farmers markets and other venues, bringing local food to you. What's new with family ties and pies? Well, a few years ago, my family wanted to do the city market and my son wanted to make money so we got together and we started making pies, scones, granola and what's new is we make brioche. It's freshly baked every Saturday morning before the market and my packaging for scone mix is brand new this year and as well as our granola. We've done fun packaging with little ties and the premise is to keep the community close, keep the family close, and connect the dots. What's important to me is that con continually connecting the dots, continually keeping it in the community, buying fresh, buying local, buying from all the awesome farmers that, that come out every Saturday, and the craftspeople, and the pie makers, and to build the community that way. Um, with all the catastrophes happening all through the world, connecting the dots with our community and our families is really important to me. We're also connecting the dots by working with Relay. We love them. It's, it's, it's a wonderful corporation, right? It's a corporation that uh, is going out to the community with groceries and pies and whatever farmers produce uh, and you can order it all online and go to one spot and get all your week's groceries in one place. It's really an awesome way to, it's, it's cutting edge really and I'm glad Charlottesville is jumping on board. My name is Dave O'Neill from Radical Roots Farm. Radical Roots is catalyzing positive change by growing high quality ecologically grown vegetables. We also educate about sustainable agriculture and permaculture. And the third part of our mission is that we're living this vision. So we're trying to live with a small footprint on the earth. We try to uh, use a lot of different creative ways to connect the local food dots. Um, first of all, we grow plants. We grow vegetable transplants for backyard gardeners. So um, we help consumers, we help homeowners get their backyard food system started. 
We also grow five acres of uh, produce and vegetables, lots of greens this time of the year. And we harvest them fresh um, and we sell them at the city market here on Saturdays. Everything sold at the city market was just harvested yesterday. It's super fresh. And we also sell to uh, the uh, retail relay folks. So you can go online and uh, connect those dots online. Super easy, just uh, click away. Um, we do a Wednesday delivery to all our retail relay customers and it's harvested that morning. Whatever you order up to Tuesday at midnight is harvested Wednesday morning and delivered Wednesday afternoon. Our farm is really a demonstration of how um, a, a very small scale intensive op operation can be a, a big su success by growing food locally, distributing it locally, growing food that people um, eat and consume and celebrate the flavor and freshness of. Um, so, you know, we have a kind of open door policy at our farm. We have um, over five events a year that are open to the public. You can come out for tours and see some of the real innovative growing techniques we're using. We're really pioneering a, uh, a system of gardening that uses uh, no-till um, permanent raised beds for annual garden production. Um, and we're doing that on a bigger and bigger scale. So it's, it's a really unique growing system. That, that, that I want to tell people about, share, share with other growers. My name is Elizabeth Van Deventer, and my husband, Tim DeChera, and I run Davis Creek Farm. Um, and we are a livestock farm down in Nelson County. We're trying to provide an alternative to factory farmed meats. That is our main goal. And um, our idea is to raise animals, not only as humanely as possible, but to have gratitude uh, for the animals' lives for uh, feeding us. And so what we're trying to do is um, put our products out in the market and we work through Retail Relay um, and other local farmers markets to do that. And just to educate people about where their food comes from and why it's important uh, to support local farmers um, rather than supporting the factory farm version, um, which uh, is difficult for the people who run those operations, who live in poverty, as well as for the animals themselves. So we're trying to provide an alternative to that. So one of the ways that we're connecting the dots is that we sell with uh, Relay. And um, what they do for us is allow us to um, sell outside of our typical area. We bring, can bring them um, a supply, and then they connect with all the customers that we can't connect with and uh, that's worked very well for us. And people are very appreciative and they, they find out about Relay through the market and through Relay they find, about, find out about us and our other farmers markets and our farm. Our attitude, our philosophy is one of gratitude uh, toward the animals. So for example, we butcher the chickens on the farm and we say a prayer of gratitude for them. Um, we feel that you, in order to nourish your body and appreciate where your food comes from, you need to appreciate the animals or whatever, the plants that nurture you. And when we don't do that, when you don't have that moment of appreciation or understanding, that's when you end up moving in the direction of factory farming, um, which creates unhealthy animals, they suffer, it produces food that is not healthy for people, and the people that are um, raising the animals are not making money either. They're living in poverty. And so what we want to do is philosophically start from this base of gratitude and from there, we feel like if you treat your animals correctly, you'll end up with healthy food. You don't pollute the environment. We're able to make you know, a livable income off of it and, and people get food that's good for them. So, And that's just another way to connect the local food dots. So if we start with this basis of appreciating the animals that we raise, from that, we not only get the healthy food, but we also get a more sustainable farming system. Because in this kind of system, rather than raising animals in a warehouse or a feedlot, where they're going to create a lot of pollution that then is a liability for society, we can raise them in such a way that they're being moved across the pastures and the, their waste, instead of becoming a liability and a pollu pollutant, becomes a benefit to the farm environment. It fertilizes the ground just enough for the pastures to recover. For example, our farm was a run-down uh, farm with a lot of erosion, and our animals are actually improving the ecology of the farm. And we can raise these animals while also um, benefiting the local wildlife. So since we've um, begun raising the animals, we actually have more wildlife on the farm. We've let the creeks grow up. We have, um, we can allow for animals, other animals, deer, 
Turkey, you know, even Fox to come into our area and we don't have to kick them out in a way that you would do if we were raising produce. So that's a nice benefit of that as well. So another way that we try to connect the dots in the local food movement is that we like to have people come out to the farm. We have um, school groups come out and little kids that come out and we try to educate them about the fact that, for example, you know, there used to be old McDonald's farm where all the animals were raised on the farm and now they're put in confinement, separated into these factory systems. And why is that not a good thing? And what, do we, what can we do to make the animals' lives better that will improve the situation for the environment and for the, the food that they give us as well? So um, what we ask is that people just call in advance and make arrangements because we're often out in the field and you won't be able to find us otherwise. Um, sometimes we work 18 hours a day, so it's hard to get a hold of us. So just call us uh, a couple days in advance and we're happy to show you around and uh, let you see how we do things for yourself. I'm John Whiteside of Wolf Creek Farm. We're a grass-based uh, cattle operation here in Madison County, just outside of Charlottesville. Fundamentally, the difference between grass-based uh, beef or dairy uh, and conventional or industrial ag beef or dairy is the way you treat the animal, what you feed the animal, how you raise the animal and therefore how nutritious and healthy the beef or the milk is for uh, the person consuming it. In industrial agriculture we're taking a ruminant that's meant to eat grass and we're feeding it a mixed ration of corn and antibiotics and other uh, uh, elements uh, to promote growth. In the grass-based business, uh, we're putting them out in their natural environment, on the grass, uh, eating grasses, legumes, uh, consuming the nutrient minerals that are in the soil, uh, and producing a beef that is obviously free of antibiotics and steroids, uh, hormones, and all the other bad things that you're, uh, you're picking up through uh, a feedlot operation. Uh, but picking also all the good things uh, through the nutrient-dense diet uh, of good soil management, good grass management. So many of our consumers uh, are very concerned about not only what they're eating, but also the footprint that they're leaving on the environment. And they look at Wolf Creek Farm and say, we're managing 1,200 acres of land. Uh, we recently won the uh, Department of Conservation uh, Natural Resources Award uh, for the entire Rappahannock River Basin for the Clean Farm Award. We manage our farm in a sustainable manner so our customers know that their beef was raised in a way that helped the land, that healed the land, that improved the soil, uh, and they can eat their beef not only uh, with the good conscience of knowing that they've done good stewardship for the land, but also that they've uh, consumed beef that's healthy for them and for their families. Uh, in terms of connecting us with that community that's here in the urban areas like Charlottesville, uh, we use multiple channels like the farmers market here at the city market. Uh, Retail Relay is a great uh, alternative for many busy people uh, to go online, make their orders from multiple farms, aggregate those purchases and have it delivered efficiently uh, through the Retail Relay distribution network. We also sell through uh, local grocers here in town, Seville Market uh, and others. So our customers are basically counting on us uh, the farmers to steward the land for them and to l deliver to their table uh, the clean beef and then they're looking to the uh, retailers like Retail Relay to connect the dot of stewardship on the farm with healthy beef on the plate. I'm a grass farmer first and foremost. My job is to manage the grass. Uh, I use the animals to harvest that grass and to produce beef for my consumers, the end customer. We run a closed herd uh, of animals, which means it's our cows, our bulls. Uh, we control the genetics of that group. We select those animals to produce uh, very healthy offspring uh, with very good marbling characteristics in the beef. Um, our job is to manage that herd, to manage the grass, to manage the water, and bring them all together in a form of stewardship that produces uh, the best beef uh, in the area and produce that for our customers here in Charlottesville. Yeah, one of the things of sustainable agriculture is it's obviously open door and uh, we do welcome visitors to come to the farm, but like most farmers, we're working uh, uh, 7 by 24, 365 days a year, uh, so it's always best to call beforehand uh, to visit our website, uh, Wolf Creek 
hyphenfarm.com uh, or to call us at 540-948-5574. Uh, we do participate in the farm tour here at Market Central uh, that has once a year uh, visits. We have a 4-H uh, farm tour in the spring where the school children from our county all come out, all the fourth graders and third graders uh, visit the farm and learn how their beef is produced and where their hamburger comes from if they buy it and, and cook it at home versus fast food uh, which is coming from the feedlots. I'm John Whiteside. I'm a natural, grass-fed, sustainable beef operation in Madison County, Virginia and you're watching Meet the Farmer TV. My name is Allie Hill and I represent Homegrown Virginia and what we're trying to do is fill the gap in the local food system of helping people eat locally, uh, more so than just your fresh fruits and vegetables. We want people to eat locally with every grocery item that they need in their pantry and so this will also help people eat locally year round and we're trying to do as many fruits and vegetables that are preserved and as many cooking raw ingredients as possible and we're trying to fill that niche and we're trying to not only use local producers but also use all local ingredients in the products and make sure that we're supporting our local farmers as well and we're trying to help that local food shed be truly local and sustainable if people want more information check out www.homegrownvirginia.com i'm michael clark your host for meet the farmer tv bringing food from the farm to the plate for you now in hd thank you for joining us again as we studied how to connect the dots how to get people to shop for you how to find local food innovative ideas and new organizations bringing local food to you and your family Thanks for joining us for another Meet the Farmer TV. And please let each of our underwriters know you appreciate their support bringing you Meet the Farmer TV. Check out their website and tell them personally you appreciate their support underwriting Meet the Farmer TV. Meet the Farmer TV is made possible by Planet Earth Diversified, Melly Productions, and Leslie P. Jenkins Photography and Graphic Design. Culpepper's Channel 21 helping to preserve the agricultural history of Virginia, and In the Kitchen magazine, serving the community and everyone who loves good food.